key different social uh, value. Mm -hmm. So uh, my question is, why do you include, include uh, the health concept? Uh, it includes physical condition. This is uh, my first uh, question. And the second question, yeah, I agree for uh, government uh, service, uh, uh, business uh, uh, service, non-cultural service, very important. I think that individual level of service is very important. Individual level of important service is very important. For example, uh, the Dr. Sergei, Sergei Joseph, you do not know the road in Korea, so some person teach you the, uh, the right uh, road to you. This service is very important. So individual level of service uh, is uh, uh, important. Uh, why do you uh, include, uh, do, do not include uh, into, uh, individual level of service? I have two questions. OK, well, give me another example of an individual level of service, because I, I still am not understanding what you mean by individual level of service. Yeah, and you know, there are, there are service, huh? The individual level service means, uh, uh, for example, some person is very sick. Very sick. Uh, and then uh, I move uh, him or her, her uh, to the, mm -hmm. the hospital. Mm -hmm. yeah, in this case, uh, I think that why do you do you mm -hmm. include my very good A very good observation, yes. Um, Actually, if I may be able to address this point by encouraging you to attend another session in which I'll be talking about that. <laughs> um, there is a session which is called, um, which is uh, chaired by Ron Anderson on suffering, human suffering. And in that session, I'll be making distinctions between uh, well-being indicators and ill-being indicators, outcome indicators and action indicators. And in the context of what we call action indicators, I'll make a distinction between individual level efforts by, let's say, a person taking another person to the hospital. If he's that person, that's an individual level kind of an effort versus, let's say, an institutional effort in which we have Again, hospitals serving the sick, right? So yes, a very good point, very good point. And, um, and it all goes back to you as an indicators researcher selecting the right theoretical concepts. So if you select the right, you know, so if you feel uncomfortable with that particular model, then you can either modify it or select another appropriate theoretical model that would deal with this issue. That's where the theory comes in, which is very important. Good point. Other observations? Yes? Uh, oh, you, you well, hold on a second. And by the way, uh, if you can state your name. So. Um, I'm Lawrence from Namibia. Uh, Joseph, you did indicate a couple of theoretical backgrounds, uh, sustainable appearance and all those. I was wondering how do you combine those to come up with a common uh, community indicator? Right, and this is a very practical question. Um, and, the, and the practicality of this is, well, it depends on the stakeholders. So let's say if you have people in your community and, I mean, people on, on the steering committee. Remember the steering committee? So you have different representatives uh, in the steering committee. Some people essentially are environmental people, people that are very much interested in pollution and, and the environment. Uh, ultimately, then you may want to use the sustainability concept because the sustainability concept would be something that they will be pushing for and you'd be able to at least make them happy. <laughs> make them happy by uh, selecting those indicators. So it's a, it's a practical question. 
uh, combining those concepts in a way that would satisfy and meet the needs of the different stakeholders on your steering committee. And yeah, it happens. Comment. Uh, would you introduce yourself? Oh, sorry, I'm Gladys. I'm from Kenya. Uh, just a comment. I think what you're presenting is very uh, is very enlightening and useful. And uh, one of the things that I've come across from my study, this concluded my PhD, is that uh, most uh, okay. My, my I focused on a resource poor setting and tried to get the, the uh, to measure quality of life of women living mm -hmm. in resource poor settings in northern Kenya. Resource poor, resource poor settings, poverty settings basically. Okay, okay. And uh, one of the things that has come through is that uh, the, the measures that are available for quality of life do not speak mm -hmm. uh, uh, the situation on the ground. And uh, that, that's basically what I would want to pursue. And then secondly is that uh, most African countries actually miss out, Kenya included, on the global Q and ranking. So for me this is very relevant because what I'm thinking is that we need indicators that reflect oh, the reality. And that's why I was asking about what if there's no data because quality of life is not measured. And, and uh, uh, in poverty settings, like in the community I focused on, other aspects, the cultural aspect, the spiritual aspect, speak more about quality of life than the housing, the income, and, and the indicators that are there, you know, uh, conventional indicators. So uh, that's my observation, and it's a challenge, and I'm thinking, how do I, how do I get there? How do I get to a place where, you know, we can have indicators that actually measure quality of life mm -hmm. in such settings? Again, a very good observation. It's uh, my, my suggestion would be um, to use this, to use the concept of social justice and address it in the context of women in poor, poverty-stricken community. So, examples would be, these are, uh, again, the kinds, the kind, okay. Okay, we've got this company now. Hello? Uh, I'm gonna raise my voice. <laughs> Um, these indicators are example from the United Nations and the United Nations they have a, an index uh, that looks at gender disparity uh, and they are very well established and really gets into some of the issues that you may be addressing but if you don't have the data, if the United Nations is not collecting that kind of data in your community, then you probably have to do it yourself. And that may be a challenge. That's a resource, yep. Yeah. But at least that would give you a hint to go forward. And then also you can look at the poor. So maybe combine the poor with women and look at you know this issue of inequality and those indicators that are well established provided by the United Nations to capture those those uh, conditions for the poor the poor women in those communities other observations yes uh, I want to hand this over to you but it's not going to Hello, hello. <laughs> okay, raise your voice. Okay, okay. I just wanted to um, get a little bit more insight on on uh, the stakeholders. And for instance, uh, uh, I, I'm sure it must be the same in most countries, but in our country also. Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan. Like uh, getting the government agencies uh, into something that that you 
people want to uh, promote or get them on board with you, it's fairly difficult. Very difficult. Yes. Um, so it's uh, either you have to know somebody in the, you know, right. in the government uh, offices, or you have to go to somebody higher up than you do. Uh, otherwise, you can't get people in to, uh, interested in your projects. Right. So that's a huge block. It is. So how do you do that? How do you get around it, or maybe you just start off and then, but you can't because you have to get them involved exactly. in, in, in the project. Right. Well, I'm going to open up to the audience to address this question <laughs> because I don't have easy answers to them. Uh, ideas from the from the audience about how to get interested public officials to be interested in in participating in a project, in an indicator's project. Ideas? You have to choose something that's going to um, be used as a tool for them to make policy changes. So you have to ensure that, you have to ensure that you're, uh, you're in line with whatever the outcome of those policy makers are. So your first step will have to be that you study what is currently being done by them and where the gaps are, and then you have to go and That's good. and write a proposal about why these gaps exist, how are you going to fix it, how what the proposal for you to do is survey all that communicate communicate data of community level data, and then they will have to see that there's going to be an actually filling of a caveat in what they're looking at. So you first have to have a sit down good photo research review about what is currently being done. Excellent suggestion. I, I, I would add like going for something that is in the in the, in the agenda, the political agenda. Is that something, agenda? something that is relevant for the government in that particular moment. Uh, or something that, something is, that they can relate to yes. at that particular and moment. And probably something that is in the media or something that uh -huh. is relevant at, at, at that moment. You need something Push the government to be interested. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, the mic is, is no good. No good. Sorry. An excellent suggestion. Yes. Um, politically relevant. Politically relevant. That is, that is, uh, that is, is addressed in the media in the current media as as uh, as an issue that the politicians are. Concerned with. That there's a mandate for Because every few years, countries sign up together for a specific mandate yeah. or an agreement about what has to be done. Yeah. So we have to go and look at that. Yes. Everybody bought into the specific, specific aspects of that. So that's the change. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Do you think? Just a suggestion, maybe uh, conduct a small study at a very small level uh -huh. and uh, show the outcomes ah. and make a presentation to the concerned authorities. Yeah. So, so as to just to so make a statement to, your to whet their appetites, so to speak. Yeah. Excellent suggestion. Thank you. Yeah. Um, um, Thank you. Okay. I think we're over time, but I, I can hang on and <laughs> we can talk some more if you like. Uh, other pressing issue? Yes. Yeah, hold on a second. My name is Jim. I come from Taiwan. I am from the perspective of population development. To my knowledge, and to my knowledge, uh, the process of birth and the death is very Step of However, the most important and the most possible way to shift the community is through the process of population migration. So, uh, so my question is, why isn't why is my migration process taken into account in the community in the research? Because People of this is the same characteristic tend to 
I would suggest that, you know, the theoretical concept that would handle this would, uh, would come from uh, this one right here. Uh, we're talking about residents' perceptions of the community quality of life. And then if you break things down by residents' evaluation of the community conditions, and and the community conditions is, I think, when it comes to immigration, you look at the social conditions. So the social conditions would be crime, public safety, racial and ethnic tensions. In the United States, for example, we have a big problem. In Europe, we have a big problem with the immigration, right? And, you know, many of the local residents are shunning, literally shunning the and there's quite a bit of racial, well, not racial, uh, tension between the, uh, the natives and the immigrants. And yes, this concept takes into account the, this, this business of the uh, uh, racial and ethnic relations. But what you do is you replace it, instead of racial, it would be an immigration issue. So yes, it's a, it's a very contemporary kind of a, an issue that we, a lot of countries and a lot of communities have been struggling with. Yes, very good. One. OK, I think we need to wrap it up. Thank you for all attending. And, uh, and hopefully that we'll see some of you getting certified, right? <laughs> Thank you.